Okay, so now we're going to have a look at using Turbo Smooth to get extra kind of detail in your models. So the first thing we're going to want you to do is start with a basic box. So notice how I've kept the Boolean example and our kind of good topology version because uh, we're going to use Turbo Smooth on them later. So Turbo Smooth is a way of basically getting lots of extra geometry into your models. So it basically subdivides your model and tries to smooth, so curve off between um, each point. So if you create a basic box like this, make sure there's no other sides in it, and add a Turbo Smooth, you'll see that's what it's done by default. Just going to turn off the ambient occlusion on this. So if we go back to our box and turn off show end result and keep turning that on, you can see that it's just smoothed off the point, so it's actually curved them right in. So let's try adding an edit poly modifier to this. And this is a classic stack to follow. So you have your bot where well you have an edit poly and then you have your turbo smooth above that. So in our edit poly we'll go to swift loop and what I want you to try and do is just add a cut at either end and then go back to your turbo smooth. And you'll see instantly where we've put those two cuts in it has kept the length of the object. Now the reason it's done that is because if we look at our geometry here, let's change the colour of that to make it a bit nicer for you to see. You'll see what it's done is it's curving between these two points and these two points rather than as it was before curving between this point and this point. And just by adding in those two lines that's what that's managed to achieve. So what I want you to try now is going back to Swift Loop and this time adding in a loop the top and the bottom as well. So let's have a look at that how that, how that looks. Now what's useful here is the show end result button so you can just hit that and have a look at how the model's working out. So we can see because we've put in those smooth lines, so a line on this side, line on this side, it's starting to maintain the shape but just curve the sides. Okay, now we're still missing a few here though. We're still missing one here, so make sure you add this this one in, so one here and one here as well. And now when we check the turbo smooth result, you can see we've got a nice smooth edge box. And you can see the geometry here. You can see where it's taking smooth lines. Come back to Edit Poly and just turn on the end result. You can see how it's taking those lines we've made and smoothing between those. So another little thing you can try is selecting your loops and actually pulling them down a bit. Uh, a little trick for that actually, if I select there, select there, if you go to scale mode and make sure you're set to the U selection centre, you should be able to just scale in like so. Hold control and then hold shift and double click and then just pull that in. Okay, so now because we've got a greater distance between the points here the points here and on every side we should find we have a more curved box. So go back to Turbo Smooth and there we go we can see that result it's now more of a smoothed box. So we can actually undo those changes and you gradually see it revert back to the harder edge box from before. And we do all those 
we get our slightly more curved box. Okay, so you can see we've also got in the Turbo Smooth options there's iterations here. Now this increases the level of detail in our model by significant margin. If I just set up the statistics here, press 7, you can see this box is 1728 tries alone. By turning that down it goes to 432 and by turning the Turbo Smooth off back to 108. So the way to think about Turbo Smooth then is whenever you're using it, let's try adding in another object here, say a cylinder like this, put cap segments on zero, actually we'll leave them on two, and then apply a Turbo Smooth to this, you'll see the end, uh, we've got a big drop off here. Now obviously the reason for that is because there's no point between here and here. So if you add an edit poly modifier and go to swift loop and add one at the top and one at the bottom, when you look at your turbo smooth you'll see you'll get a much sharper edge at the top here. Now the way I like to think about it then, for every point that I want to have a you know, it's going to get turbo smoothed. I like to think about having, if this is my main kind of curve point here, my main shape defining point, the top of the cylinder here, I like to think about having a loop on either side of it so that I can define my curve. So if I select this loop, you can obviously just scale that out like that. And you'll see here I now have a loop either side. And when we curve it off, you'll see the curve is between those points. So if I select this, move it down, I should now find I have a bigger curve from here to here. And there it is and you can quickly test that by undoing like so. Okay, so what about when it comes to more complex shapes such as the ones here? Well, let's first of all try applying it to this model. So we apply a turbo smooth and you can instantly see we've got a lot of problems. This is obviously because our topology is so poor on our shape. So this is another reason why it's very important to have good topology. Smoothing like this is not, using a turbo smooth is not very good when you've got uh, poor topology. It does also, it can work on tries but not very well. So let's try turbo smoothing this one, our nice topology version. It's already looking much better. Obviously though, we don't have um, our dividing lines in there. So if we add an edit poly between the turbo smooth and the symmetry, we can now come into here, turn off our end result and start adding in some loops. So we know if we want to maintain this box shape, we'll need one here. And as I said before, this is a main dividing line. This Let me just select it in case it gets in your way. See that loop there? So we've got one loop this side, but we're going to need another loop this side. Now swift loop, oh yeah, it's going to let me do it. So we'll swift loop in there. Now if we preview that, you can see we're starting to divide, uh, define this shape a lot better. Now another issue we're going to have is around this here. So we could either use swift loop again to define a shape here or we could use something like chamfer and set it to 2 and that would give us our centre line and then one either side. And obviously we need to do that on this side too. Now luckily it should have just saved the settings, so I should be able to just hit chamfer. Nope. I have to activate the options and then hit OK. So again, I'll have to swift loop this side and I've already done that one. 
So now if we turbo smooth that, see how much better that one looks than this one with our terrible topology. This one looks a lot more detailed, a lot nicer, so much overall much better. Okay, now one problem we have is if we look here, we see that we're getting a big curve here. So we've got a couple of ways of fixing that. We could try adding in a swift loop either side of it here, but we might find that that causes a few problems with the circle. The circle might not be, well, kind of circular anymore. Yeah, you can see where it's pinching at the edge here. This bit's now fine, but it's pinching on the circle. So I'm going to undo that. And then come back to the vertex mode here. And what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use these lines that we already have existing. So if I select this one edge here, I'm going to select these edges up to here and do the same on the other side. And then select it. And I'm just going to ramp that up to there. And then I need to do the same with this one here. And just pull that over to there and then do the same with this side but remember um, one thing I've done here is there's a lot of with these specific changes I don't need to do them on all these sides because I can just do it on this side and symmetry it over but rather than do that I'm going to show you another tool so we'll go to turbo smooth here and now we're maintaining that perfect circle but we've got the perfect edge on this shape here now if you wanted to, you could do this side too, and then delete a side and re-symmetry it. But instead I'm going to show you how to use the Array tool. So what we're going to do is, we're going to, first of all, in case I mess this up, I'm going to clone this over here. I'm going to select the original shape, go down to Polygon mode, and just select one quarter of the shape. So rotate round to make sure you've got it. Then I'm going to use Control i to invert the selection and hit delete. Okay, now when you're using an array, you will have to make sure that your pivot is exactly where you want it to array around. Now because we started with a cylinder, we know that the pivot's already in bang on the right place. But you might find if you've made a different type of shape that this technique isn't going to work for you until you change the pivot to the right place and obviously you can do that with your effect pivot and stuff like that over here. Okay so but because ours is already in the right place there's no messing about we can just go straight to tools go to the array tab here and you're presented with lots of random numbers. Now let's just work our way down this. Now we know we want to rotate this shape around four times. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. So because there's only four, it's going to array around 360 degrees. So 360 divided by four is 90. So we should know that that's going to be 90. I know it's Z as well because X and Y are here, so I know that Z is our other axis. Now count, I know we need four. I might need to set that to three, I don't know, we'll try. And then if I hit the preview tab here, you can see it's arraying it around. Now it hasn't quite done this correctly, but what's cool is, just to show you real quick, is I can actually preview all this in real time, which is really nice. Now the reason it's not, it's not doing it right is because this side here doesn't match up to this side here. So that's my mistake, so I'm going to leave this off and I'll do it as a demo another time. So for this shape instead then I'm going to delete the turbo smooth so I might as well just stick with this to show you some extra things. Apply another symmetry like so and then apply another symmetry 
only this time set it to Y. Okay, so then apply my turbo smooth, and there we have our perfect shape. Okay, so that's the kind of basics of using Turbo Smooth and a couple of other tools for you. Obviously, we can already see with this shape we're using up 1500 tries. So, uh, all I'm saying is be careful when you're using it, um, when you're using Turbo Smooth because it's very easy to go kind of end up with massively high try counts. Uh, so we will be covering some more kind of turbo smooth on more detailed objects so have a look at the next tutorial for doing that.